finally, we're done with the vehicle. It's taken us another six months to finish the vehicle. And this is due to the client making a couple of changes since we delivered it last year. This whole process pushed this whole vehicle out with about six months. What added to the delays was COVID-19. We had a serious problem getting raw materials into the country like uh, metal. Uh, the metal, metal union, uh, the guys were striking. So it was compound problem on problem, but we got through it. And uh, here we are today with a vehicle that we're very proud of. So what was the requirement from the client? Firstly, we wanted a Range Rover, the roof cut off, make a hunting vehicle. So he wanted a hunting rack, he wanted a place to put the guns, he wanted a place to put some small items, he wanted a fridge in the rear, uh, he wanted the seat to sit on. Um, and then taking all this, we incorporated all that into the Range Rover. Of course, getting the vehicle not to sag was one of the main things, but now the nitty gritty is getting the nitty gritty sorted out. That was a main concern or the main prize at the end of the day. And when we finished, it had to look stock, it had to look current, it had to look Range Rover. When we designed this, we incorporated uh, some smaller items uh, that we had to look at. Um, storage area. One of the smaller things that we looked at is when it rains, there's no cover. There's an umbrella on each side. The seat, we retain the original uh, seat where we can still switch on either a warm seat or an air-conditioned seat. The gun racks were designed in such a mannerism that the client can still stand and shoot and have another gun resting. Grab handles were incorporated as well uh, for entering and exiting the vehicle. One of the key features that the client was looking for was when he sits inside the vehicle and he wants to open it to reach down quite far but a little bit of a problem. So we incorporated a door opener. When you hit it, it actually opens the door without having to bend all the way down. From a security perspective, it was a little bit, um, I would say, a problem for him not, not having a rail or anything here. So what we did was uh, we designed this unit. You get in, you can just slide it down. When you drive this vehicle, there's a lot of dust entering the vehicle from the rear. So what we created is once you start the vehicle, there's a positive pressure system. Uh, it sucks in air here and, and pressurize the whole system at the back so that there's no uh, air coming in, but it actually pushes all the air out. So one of the, the major uh, stumbling blocks that we had is the rear door of the Range Rover. Normally, you would press the button, the top part would open up first and then the bottom part will fold down. Now, we incorporated, we got the top part, we stuck to the bottom part and really did some funky electronic work to get the system to work. On the rear, we've um, designed three drawers, storage bins, I would say. Uh, we've, we've attached a magnet on the inside that will actually keep it closed. That's the three top ones. On the, on the bottom, we've got uh, Engel fridge freezers, cold drinks or beverages. Um, that is adjustable to the temperature that you would need. And like I said, all these are pressurized so no dust will enter these units. Uh, when that pressurized system runs, all the dust it gets pushed out of the Range Rover. Another thing that a requirement from the client was, when he's in the bush and he dirties his hands, he would like a water system where he can actually open it. This is a pressurized system. There's no water in it right now. Um, tuck it away. It's got a magnet on it that keeps the door closed. To reach the rear seat, uh, we didn't want to put pipe work down the side, so it was decided that we built two steps inside the body. That was a bit of a tricky system, but uh, it's quiet and sturdy. So 
sitting on the rear gives you a very nice view of the game when you have a drive. Um, so it's actually the perfect height for when you go out. The client needs to speak to the driver telling him where to go, what to do. So we've installed a sliding window where you can speak to him and if he doesn't want his conversation overheard, you can just close that up again. So great care was taken to determine the height of the shooting rack and the seat. I'm a little bit shorter than the client, so don't take me as a guide, but this was built for him, uh, purpose made, uh, where he would sit and aim, and then you can just shoot. Um, and the, the height was exactly correct for him. The shooting rack was designed as a removable unit. It's got eight studs um, that you press it in, and it's quite sturdy. It's really difficult to get it off. But in the, in the need, you can take it off. If the client just wants to go and do a game viewing session, you can literally just clip it off, uh, leave it in the, in the motor, in the garage or whatever, and uh, you can have this additional viewing um, area. So the wheels has been treated or sprayed in um, a gel component that makes it very puncture resistant. But in the event of getting a puncture, you still do have an access to the spare wheel. In the event of a failure of one of the wheels that you get a puncture, um, these two yellow levers, that's the release, you can start moving this back. This then gives you access to the spare wheel. We've added in this an additional spare battery for the, the two fridges that they run independently. To enable us to get water on the on the vehicle, we built a water tank and now to fill this you need to lift up this rear, remove this protective unit and then remove the cap that's in there. You can fill it with water, close it up, close that up and that's sorted. So one of the, the other requirements was that we needed to fit a winch in the event if the client goes off-road and uh, need to go and retrieve, retrieve a buck and he gets stuck at least he's going to have a winch to pull him out some difficult situations. The inside of the vehicle is pretty standard, hasn't changed anything except for uh, we've added the backboard, we've got a system that shows you the auxiliary battery, what the, the voltages are so you can get an idea of what's happening there. Of course another uh, there is a button if the driver wants to speak to the client as well um, and then closing it as well. So Shane, um, this was a pretty daunting task. It sure was. Um, I know you got the brunt of it. Uh, you really worked really, really hard, you and Dean. And I just want to say thanks, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Lucky working with you, and uh, will you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we would. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think uh, I think maybe now is the right time for the next project. What do you say? Oh, yeah, for sure. We'll definitely take something on that. It's going to be well worth it. Some more challenges. Something that, uh, you know, that first makes a cover of a magazine again. <laughs> it's hard to always strive for. Exactly. <laughs> so, so we'll just keep the tradition going in that way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All so, good. Excellent. <laughs>